Good morning. Ah, there we go. I don't know why it is, but every time we connect, this uh, my my computer doesn't connect automatically with audio. I have to I have to give it a command. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe it's anticipating the foolishness we're going to say. <laughs> we're better off not recording it. Yeah, no doubt. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. What's going on? Oh, not much, man. We're we're getting close to installing some of this job, which is really exciting. Right. Ready to be ready to be done with this one and move on to the next thing. Nice, nice. So nice. we're a few days behind where we wanted to be, but not far. Um, so I think we're going to start installing probably first of the week and, uh, still have, still have to build the big conference table. You know, I've made all the parts, but it's not put together yet. I've got joints and I've got to put the tabletop up on the CNC machine, which will be a fun task. Nice. So, got to cut the 14 foot long boards. So uh -huh. I think I'm going to try the method that we talked about by putting both boards up. See if I can put my hands up here. Uh -huh. Putting both boards up and together and then cutting straight down both to use, take advantage of the cut with a 3 8 inch bit to make them a tight fit. So doing the old trick with the handsaw through the joint kind of, the, the, the virtual yeah. version of the, the digital version of that. Pretty much. I'm going to try it with a, with a couple of long, just two buys. Something, yeah. <laughs> and, and see how it works before, but you know, before I do this with big expensive boards of mahogany, you know, so. Have you we'll thought see. about doing something weird, like some kind of wiggly joint or something like that? Sort of show On off tabletop? Nah. Just something different, to, you know, than a, like, like rather than pushing it, looking like it pushed through a joiner. Well, Kind of I a, think on this one, I think the design of the table just wants yeah. to be straight. You know, everything is pretty linear, straight it's on. Fun there. to play with, though. Instead of trying to design the two parts, yeah, you know, and doing all the offsetting business, just design a a long kind of wiggly line. Yeah, that's that's, and then just put them close enough together so that you were sure that you got all the wiggle. Yeah, would be a kind of a neat way to do that. Well, Bill, I was going to call you yesterday, and I thought, no, we'll do this as a video. All right. Um, I want you to talk to me about adding a second Z to my machine and what would, what would be entailed in that. You know, I, I initially was thinking about putting a tool changer on this machine. Uh -huh. And the more I think about it, you know, I really only switch between two bits. I mean... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Don't be coughing now. Everybody get no, it's it's dusty in here. We've sanded. We've sanded all week. Everything okay. is just blanketed in dust, and it's it's, it's awful. Um, no, when I'm when I'm in production, it's it's kind of like the way I'm working. I'm switching between, say, a three eighths inch cutter and a V bit, or I'm switching between a three eighths inch compression and a quarter inch straight or so, you know, it's right. a combination of two bits most of the time and changing, uh, you know, changing two bits wouldn't be so bad if I'm changing for another two bit setup and it'd be a lot more affordable than a, an ATC. You know, at least that's my theory. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Well, I mean, it's simpler for sure. I mean, yeah. you basically got, um, you know, if you need to do it, we just actually did a little video on the, the there's a desktop max ATC. Yeah. It's pretty new. I saw that. That's really popular. I saw that. It's a great video. Yeah. Well, we're, um, it's, it's pretty, but you know, if, if, if you're, most of your stuff is pretty binary, it's either bit A or bit B, then the two Z's works really well. Yeah. Um, it'll take some modifying. Because you got to be able to put, you know, you got the whole extra up and down. Well, the you know the plate is there on this right. machine. If you if you remember the way this was set up, it initially had some kind of a second Z on it. Yeah, it had a little um, like a drill block or something. Yeah, it had a little Dewalt um, six eleven. 
trim router just yep. for doing parts labeling. And it was all sort of a plywood, but it kind of, it was sort of a, the way the air drills are set up. It was kind of snooted on the front of the, wrapped around the, um, the spindle in a cage. Right. So above and beyond the hardware, I mean, it's a matter of just sort of and an extra Z. You probably got the driver there already because that used to, that used to um, be set up there. So right. you, you have to add an extra Z and, and the, you know, sort of an extra spindle. It depends on, you know, you can maybe be able to get by with like a 2.2 or something like that. You got a pretty beefy spindle on for the first one, don't you? I do. And I don't need two big spindles. Yeah. And then, you know, my, my thought is to, is to keep the big spindle for, you know, three eighths inch, half inch, right. spoil board cutter, stuff like that. And add a small, much lighter weight, second Z for V carving and for, you know, I don't do any heavy sign cutting or anything like that. So I don't need, you know, I don't need to swing around huge V cutters. Um, um, I mean, I've been using this 2.2 HSD for, I don't know, 15 years. Yeah. I, mean, I cut a lot with it and it's held up really well. Yeah. So, so you get the hardware issue. You got, you know, you got to have the thing. Right. That moves up and down and holds a bit. Um, you're fortunate in that you've got a wide tool. Yeah. You basically cut sort of four feet out of a five foot capacity tool, which gives you enough room in a, in a four, in a, in a this tool that's designed by four feet. If you're not careful, you can lose a little bit because everything's all the bits are offset. So you end up like a little strip on the end, but you right. can, you can have, have it set up so that you have full coverage with both these. Well, all, the, all these cabinets that I made, I cut out of five by eight material and I was right up to the max. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was literally trimming the two extreme most edges. You know, the, the material comes in 61 inches or something. And, you know, I was, I was 60 and a half or whatever it was. If you need to cut a full five feet, you're going to lose a little bit on one of them but it may not make it because you got that offset, you know, just this one, if this one's going to cut five feet, this one's going to be off in right. sort of nowhere. So it may take a little adjusting to where your spool board is. Yeah. Um, software wise, it's all um, already kind of set up for you. So there's the, there's a, my variables file. Right. Comes with Back to the, my variables. Yeah. File. It's, a, it's a pretty neat. And so it's designed, it holds the things that are tool specific for you, for your machine. Right. right. So what, the, what the offset is from the proc switches and all that. And it's, so it's, it keeps stuff like that. If you have a different uh, Z0 plate, it keeps those things just in a sort of persistent um, variable, sort of like the old INI &I files that just kept variables right. that were yep. values that were specific to your particular setup. Um, but it has, settings for how there so you'll have an offset between the center of both of those z's and it keeps the value of that you have to set it up once but those are those are fixed they stay that way all the time they're always off in y i mean there's always an offset there and there's almost always a little bit in z if you have different you know different spindles if you put a real router on one and spindle on the other whatever there could be a little right. bit in x but there's always you know couple inches in, in Y. So those yeah. values, once they're set up, are just kept. And the way it's kept track of is in the tool, the bit numbers in your tool database in VCARV. So it seems to me bits one through 19, each bit has a number. They don't have right. to be unique. Um, almost all of mine are bit one because I'm too lazy to get it all sorted out. But if you go above 19, from 20, number from 20 and up, the software looks and knows that that goes for a second Z. You have to do a little bit of organizing. Right. Um, and they don't have to be unique. You can have the same bit as bit number five and bit number 25. You can just create a copy right. of it so that, you know, it isn't right. like you can only use your V bit. But then the, the, the software just figures out which one is, you know, it just reads the bit number in the post processor and says move to do that. And it does automatically does that offset. So that's, that's all it really has to do. 
is figure out where, you know, how far to move over so that the two virtual zero points align. Yeah. So it's a little fussy to set up. Um, you so need what, to keep track of where the what, bits are. What mechanism on, on, on this machine with this setup makes, if, it's, if they're both mounted to the same plate, which, how does one bit go down lower than the other to, to make the cuts? It's, it's got a full up and down. It's got a separate stepper motor to move it up and down. The secondary, it's got right, okay. The it's secondary got system. System. Gotcha. Yep. Well, that's what I was thinking, either that or a pneumatic setup. I didn't know. Yeah. A pneumatic's kind of, kind of binary. You know, it's up or down. Right. So that's how the air drills work. Yep. You know, they, they plunge below the surface. And then the, the original Z moves the whole wheel. But they basically would track that out of the way, then move down. Right. Um, and if, you, if you're just going to drill, if you just want to, you know, the guys that do the 32 millimeter cabinet stuff and want to drill a bajillion shelf pin holes, the air drill is perfect for that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I do make cabinets, but I'm not making enough of them. And I'm not going right. back into the, you know, full, full-time cabinet mm -hmm. business life. Right. So I'm perfectly happy doing some peck drilling where I need to and, you know, move on. It's not eating up that much time and, and I'm not producing cabinets like that. Uh, the, you know, the, the cabinets that I'm doing, they're perfectly fine with so the way, way I'm doing it. You know what you want to do. I would take a picture of my Z axis. Yeah. Of the plate. Right. And I would send an email to ShopBot sales. Yep. And say, this is what I got. And what's involved. What, in can, you, what can you sell me? What can, yeah, what can you do? Because I, I honestly don't know. I'm, I'm terrible about how to you know, deal with that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't keep track right. of the hardware end of it. Um, but they can tell you, you know, yes, you, you know, you can just bolt it on. You need another plate. You need whatever, you know, you need driver. You might want to take a picture, open the door on the, um, on the box. And yeah. see if there's, make sure that, take a picture of that, make sure there's another driver. I'm pretty confident because we did move, we did have a, an interesting little, I think we put like a handy bot Z on that one because it was just for engraving. And that one came from um, um, a buddy of mine at a company called Home Built that was doing stud right. construction. Right. Digitally augmented um, traditional stud construction. So he wanted to label yep. every part. He just put a little bit in it. And, um, and it just made a little V carve. Yeah, he just did a little bit. Of, you know, I think he used a straight bit and just kind of did an on on the line font, single single stroke okay. font, so that all the parts. Yeah. Were, so it did, you know, it can cut a sixteenth of an inch deep. You know, right? Bruce two by four or two by six. So, um, but yeah, I mean, in your case, it it would save you kind of standing around waiting for the bit to for the bit change. Well, you know, when I, when I initially started with the machine, I was thinking, man, you know, ATC is going to be really necessary because I'm going to be changing bits all the time. The reality of it is that as I'm working with it and I'm seeing the way I'm really using this machine as opposed to the way I used the old setup that I used to have, mm -hmm. that was changing from you know, like a, like an OG, like a large OG to a, you know, a clearance bit, like a big half inch bit for making clearance passes. And then it would switch over to a little 16th of an inch bit to sort of square out corners. And, you know, it was, it was constantly, the system was designed to do MDF raised panel doors. Right. And, and it did really complex doors, but I'm not doing that anymore. And, as nice as that is to have, really, I don't know that I would be taking advantage of mm -hmm. uh, what's going on with that. Three quarters I'm of your bits of top have gone on. One bit for multiple things. And I'm, and I'm seeing that I'm switching between a quarter inch bit and a three eighths inch bit, or, mm -hmm. you know, the, like the big spoil board uh, cutter that I'm using for, you know, for, for leveling things and for, uh, 
you know, creating deep pockets and things, stuff like that, and a three eighths inch bit or, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's really just a pair of things that I'm switching between three eighths and B bit or whatever it is. And so, so one setup I think could do the vast majority of what I'm doing with two Z's and it would save me a tremendous amount of time to not switch between those two bits that I'm requiring. It, it so, was, it's worth finding out and you know, also find out the price difference. I mean, it, it, yeah. if you went ATC, you'd have to replace the spindle you have because it's got to have the pneumatic draw bar and all that stuff. You'd have to run air all the time to it. And then you got all the collets and changes and all that stuff. And it, it, it does complicate things for sure. Um, right. I don't know what it costs compared to buying another, a whole nother Z setup and another spindle. You know, it, it would be worth seeing what the, what the difference in price is. If it's not much difference between replacing the one you have with an ATC spindle and doing a whole nother setup, you know, it, it may, it may make more sense just to, you know, have it put two bits in the holder for now. And at some point you may decide, I don't know. I just don't have a clue. I know the spindles are expensive for the ATC. And then you've just got holders and you know all that kind of stuff. There's, there's. Things. Well, you also have you you also have the long term cost of of con, you know constant compressed air, right? Yeah. Which I, you know, I I really have no love for. I mean, I have a, a great big compressor, but I don't I don't run it unless I need it. And most of the time, you know, unless I'm spraying finishes or something, I turn it on, it fills the tank, and I turn it off. And that tank will last a whole shop full of people the entire day. That's that's the way you my know. that's the way mine is. I just turn it on when I when I need it. And uh, I, I had a big three phase compressor that I almost never used. I ended up giving it to the guys next door, and um, yep. I just use one of those little pancake compressors for all I need to run a a brand nail every once in a while, or you know, I have to blow the dust off of all this little white white sawdust off of all the uh, ear saver stuff. And I just blast it off with a little gun. But well, we have, much I mean, we have shop wide compressed air. So when we're doing, you know, classes in here, whenever, whenever that gets up and running again, yeah. you know, but there, there will be, you know, there, you'll have eight people on lathes and there's an airline between every two machines. Mm -hmm. So you can just grab it and you can blow off, you know, the, the lathe bed, or you can like excavate the chips from inside of a hollow form. So if you imagine a sort of a, yeah, yeah, when you blow yeah. out and all that stuff yeah. comes out. Three in there. Yeah. And I've tried vacuum and stuff like that. The problem is, you know, to buy, to supply eight vacuum cleaners is just, you know, obnoxious. And then you've got to store them when you're not using them 90% of the time. And you know, they don't, they're not as efficient as an air gun. So, you know, we just, we just use air nozzles, just blow it out and keep moving. I wonder if you can uh, make a set up with a, get a handful of those lighthouse central vac motors, just make a box with a couple of those in there and then run, run a line through to get vacuum. Well, I, I mean, it's I've already, plumbed, it's already plumbed in here for, okay. for the air. I mean, everything's running. It's already, that's, that's long done. So I'm, you know, I'm really not worried about that. Um, but the thing, you know, the thing is we used to run our big compressor. I think it was a 15 horse uh, compressor at the big shop. And it was like, you know, I mean, we talk about it as the, as the, the extra utility bill, you know, just yeah, constant, yeah. just money. It was just yeah. un unreal. It's hard because we used we used pneumatic sanders. We had the air cooled spindle on the Northwood. We had uh, an air cooled carriage on the shelling beam saw. I mean, it was just stuff is just constantly blowing every all all over the shop. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, it cost us a fortune. You get a couple of pin nailers and some, and you know, a narrow crown stapler or something. You know, you can you can use a lot of air pretty quick oh yeah well and those little those little pneumatic sanders are probably the best sanders around except they just consume air yeah yeah i mean it's unreal how much air they use mm -hmm. they use they use more air than spraying finishes yeah 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it just, just whizzes through. Yep. Well, cool, man. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not totally convinced I needed a second Z, but it's, you know, the more I use the machine, the more I'm realizing that I'm switching between pairs of bits for whatever operations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I can, if I can reduce that amount of time, you know, if I could cut that time in half, it would be worth the investment, I think. You know, like on the, on these cabinets that we just did, uh, I cut everything out with a three eighths inch tool, three eighths inch compression bit. And then on every sheet, I would change the bit over, you know, I, I would go start with a quarter inch bit and I would cut like the groove for the back panel on the cabinet. And I would cut the shelf pin holes. Mm -hmm. with and then I would wait for the tool to come back up to me and switch out and re-zero to a three eighths inch bit to do all of the profile and pockets and all that kind of stuff. And it just, that's a lot of time. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of time sort of getting, waiting for it to do something. You're sort of hanging around. It's yeah. Like, and you can't really, you know, when it's doing that kind of stuff, you can't really do anything else. You're, you're, no. And you, you don't want to here babysit it. You don't want to get involved and, in something and look over and it's been sitting for 15 minutes waiting for you to change the bit and you forgot about it. Right. You know, it's a, yeah, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we all have. Couple of that. So, anyway, I don't know. I think I think that could work, and I it got me thinking about our conversation about um, about the the offset mode. Uh huh. Is it? Do you do you get into those things with the with the second Z? Well, it sort of does it virtually. So okay. it sort of it stores the distance between the two. In the my very whatever that offset is, I got and it automatically so it just, compensates based on the bit number. So and once you set it up, this is it this, just says yeah. bit number, bit number twenty through forty or what? Yeah. The that offset. Yeah. So it does it internally. Saying? Okay. Well, cool, man. I think I just heard the machine. Speaking of of the machine waiting on you. I just cut another sheet this morning that I got. Mine are, mine are all waiting on me too. This morning. Yeah. only little children. <laughs> I started so let's go to work. I started cutting about six this morning, so I just had a sheet finish up. And I'll throw another one on, clean it off. I, my shop looks like a uh, a cross between a nice white sand beach and a, a poorly managed cocaine lab. There's just white <laughs> dust everywhere. It's uh. You know, and I've been wearing this uh, this dust mask. You know, these cloth ones are pretty comfortable. Yeah. And I've been using it just to keep, you know, this this plastic dust is not real, real fine. It's kind of granular. So it's not like there's the super fine. And it's kind of heavy. It's not yeah. hanging in the air. Yeah, it's not in the air. So I don't kind of feel the same worry as I do with sawdust. It's got this, you know, sort of death in the air. Uh, yeah. So I think this thing helps. It keeps me from from swallowing too much plastic. So I wander around all day. I keep this thing hung around my neck and I just pop it up over my ears and um, vacuum up most of it and go at it with the leaf it's, blower. It's definitely time to rethink face masks, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I saw a post from you, I don't know, a week ago or something about, you know, rethinking this. And, and uh, you know, I thought about it. I've got, I've got an organic vapor respirator that I just loathe wearing. Oh, yeah. I've got one of those respirated face shields that I turn in a lot and it weighs a ton. So my head constantly doing this, you know, and it works great, but it just, it's just heavy after a while. Everything I do, I tend to do for hours. You know, it's not, it's not short sessions. So uh, then I've got those RZ masks, which are yeah. decent. They're, they're decent, but they're not, they're not perfect. Um, and then the paper dust masks, which are just itchy and fog up your glasses and oh, irritating. Yeah, you know, the the good old three three M paper masks. Yeah. But these uh, these little soft. My wife has made a bunch of these and and has ordered them. And anyway, we've got sort of face masks all over the house now. And you know, I've sort of like wandered around and picked one up and gone, oh, that's not right. <laughs> you know, three bears kind of stuff. Yeah. And I've got two or three of them that fit just right and they're comfortable. 
and I and I don't mind wearing them. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. You know, I used to just loathe wearing those stupid 3M ones and the yeah. respirator kind and all that. And I've got an RZ style one, and you know, it's just it, it's just not comfortable. And these things, um, no, Gene not. Taylor Chopot made some for my wife and my son, cool. and um, you know, they've got a little stiffener piece so you can you know. Yep sort of mold it to your snoot and um, it's got a pocket for putting filter material. And they said one of the best ones are those blue shop rag, shop claws, you know, the right. Scott ones you get, they say that's one of the best filter materials in the world. So huh. I'm working on getting her just to those, make those, like heavy, this dust mask. Like those heavyweight paper towels? Yeah, they're just kind of blue. Scott makes them, they come in a box you can pull out or I've seen them in a roll too. They say that's really good material. Huh. But I'm, cool. I'm going to give up on all the other stuff. I hate, you know, a mask that you wear all the time is way better than one that, you know, as soon as the sta sander's spinning down, you're take, ripping the mask off because it's such an uncomfortable pain. You think 3M's listening to this? I hope so. I hope this is the perfect. We got 100,000 people in this country making, making medical or health masks. Yeah. So this is the perfect opportunity for somebody to say, let's make a better, you know, me Safety masks for, you know, the poor guy in the shop. We all come fuss and whine about them. You know, they're, they're uncomfortable. They're just. Well, no matter, it, it, no matter how diligent you are, I mean, I'm pretty good about wearing, you know, all that stuff. But no matter how much you, how much you say you do it, I mean, everybody takes it off at the wrong time. I mean, the worst part about it is as soon as you stop sanding, your phone rings or something, you reach over to grab it, you take that mask off, and that's when everything's still in the air. Yeah. Everywhere. And so that's, you're breathing in the very worst of it when you take it off. You're not supposed to take them off for like 10 or 15 minutes after oh, you said you're staying in the shop and that's just not happening. Man, I, it's the first thing I do to rip that mask. Because there's no good way with, you know, like the no. two strap 3M ones. No. You can't just kind of slide it down because it jams up against your chin. Right. I mean, there's just, the only way to do it is to take it all the way off. And that, well, we, we are so popular, Bill. I think 3M has to be watching this. I hope so. <laughs> I got all the executives are sitting around saying, those guys are brilliant. That's the future of 3M. Those guys, man. Oh. <laughs> Why do you think of this? We need to throw piles of money at them to figure this out. <laughs> Bill, go, go tend to your machine, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care, buddy. You too. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.